Hi, I'm Sandy Baird, and with me today is Kurt Maida, and we're going to be discussing today what's happening in the world, particularly as it relates to the recent Afghanistan withdrawal on the part of President Biden. Two ways to look at this. Was it a real withdrawal, or was it, in fact, a defeat? We're also going to be looking at the importance of Af Afghanistan and world empires, and Kurt Maida with me is a man who's done a lot of research on the subject, so he will be discussing this with me, and hopefully you're all listening out there. Okay, so Kurt, what's going on in Afghanistan? And here we have a map showing where Afghanistan is in the world in the first place. Yeah, yeah okay, so Sandy, one of the things uh, I think that the average person has probably seen on TV in the last month or so is the debacle known as the withdrawal mm -hmm. from Afghanistan, uh, which, was, has been a disaster. It's been a disaster of policy. It's been a disaster from a standpoint of what we've seen in the media. Uh, and unfortunately, 12 American Marines at the, at the tail end of the withdrawal lost their lives. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's- And a lot of Afghanis too, right? And a lot of Afghanis mm -hmm. on, the, on the way out. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about the withdrawal. We'll talk a little bit about Afghanistan historically mm -hmm. and how it became this hotbed of terrorism mm -hmm. since really the 1970s. But it wasn't always like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, Afghanistan, you may have heard, has been known as the graveyard of empires. It's a, uh, it's a more recent description of that nation state. It wasn't always the case. Uh, there have been a lot of empires that have successfully conquered Afghanistan. If we briefly. Look at, yeah, briefly. If we look at the map, in, in terms of history, briefly, mm -hmm. if we look at the map, uh, we have uh, Pakistan to the right, we have Iran to the left, and then our fine folks here pulled up a map of Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan. These countries were all formally Soviet republics. Right. So that was, you know, if you... Wait, now, they're now independent of Russia, right? These are Russia, now independent, right? okay. correct. Mm -hmm. But before 1992, you could have written the Russia. USSR mm -hmm. at the top of this map. Mm -hmm. And then what's missing here is to the right of Pakistan is India also. And above that is China mm -hmm. uh, on this map. So those are the two missing portions on this map. So why is it the graveyard of empires? It originally fell within the sphere of India in antiquity uh, thousands of years ago. So the culture thousands of years ago was largely Indian. Uh, you had the Zoroastrian religion that emanated from Afghanistan. Buddhism was very prominent in Afghanistan also. Pretty much the entire country was Buddhist, believe it or not, at one point prior to the advent and the uh, arrival of Islam. And then for about a few hundred years, Hinduism was the and main religion. again from religion. India, largely, right? Correct, from, mm -hmm. as was Buddhism too. Right. Uh, and I think people that are familiar with Afghan news watching you know, the news over the last 20 years may remember the large Buddhist statues in right. Afghanistan that were blown up by the, Taliban, by the Taliban because they were seen as being uh, controversial or anti-Islamic right. and pagan. Uh, so, and pagan. And pagan, right. yeah, mm -hmm. pre predating the, the arrival of Islam in the 1100s. Since the 1100s, though, the country has been solidly Islamic. Uh, I think Pew Research shows that 99.7% of the population is Islamic, uh, with a small sprinkling of Sikhs, Hindus, some Christians, and up until the end of the 20th century, there was a small Jewish population in Afghanistan also, but most of them left for the United States and Israel mm -hmm. uh, after the Taliban really Im were embedded. And what about in the, the Christians? There are Christians? There are Christians, but it is illegal to practice Christianity in public. There are no public churches in the country of Afghanistan. Are there mosques? Yeah, they're all mosques, yeah, okay. mostly. Right. Yeah, but right. uh, they have allowed some Hindus to have Hindu temples and some Sikhs to have what are known, what, what their religion calls, they're called Gurudwaras. These are Sikh temples. Mm -hmm. uh, they do exist. They're licensed. Uh, but Christian churches have been outlawed by the Taliban for a long time. Mm -hmm. So they don't exist. So how did we get from you know this time in antiquity to today? You have a place that Alexander the Great conquered at a one Greek. point. A Greek, mm -hmm. right. So there were elements, there are elements of Greek culture in old Afghanistan, and there are Greek temples in Afghanistan that still stand. 
Uh, but we move from there to the last thousand years where Islam has basically dominated the country. The English had a foray in Afghanistan. Uh, the area was referred to as the Great Game. Right. Uh, because the British wanted to create a buffer state between India, which was British controlled uh -huh. for about 300 years up until the 1940s, and Russia, Russia Czarist right. Russia. Not the so USSR. the Great Game, so called. Yeah was a game to control Afghanistan and the two as, as a buffer state as a buffer state between Britain and Russia correct between Britain and Russia yeah okay so the, the the British were concerned at that point that Russia may have uh, an interest in overtaking British India and the trade and all mm -hmm. the uh, things that were attractive uh, for that for, for, for Great Britain in India. So they in, intended on creating this buffer state, which Afghanistan was because, of, because it's largely a mountainous region, very difficult to uh, cross, especially in a time frame that preceded airplanes. Uh-huh. Okay, so that, that was in the 19th century, the great game, correct? That's correct. And who won that, if anybody? Uh, no one essentially won except for the Afghans. Right. The Afghans were able to uh, repel the British and, and the Russians and the Russians but more so the British mm -hmm. in, uh, in a brutal fashion uh, very Taliban-esque if we watch the news and if you read history uh, I just want to mention a source that I have mm -hmm. it's uh, a writer a Scottish writer by the name of William Dalrymple mm -hmm. who is an expert on South Asia and South Asian history mm -hmm. and he talks about how difficult Great Britain uh, how difficult a time Great Britain had in trying to control that area. Mm -hmm. They even tried to install a puppet king mm. who was an Afghan king at one point, and all these people were executed. The British cavalry that was sent there, they were all executed, and it was an absolute disaster for Great Britain. Mm -hmm. So they did not have their buffer state. They wound up fighting three wars in the course of about 75 years. The last one ended in 1919. Uh, right after Afghans. World War One, right, and at that point, at the end of World War One, the British were exhausted. Right, uh, they had enough to deal with with respect to the Germans and the losses that they uh, experienced on the battlefield mm -hmm. in, in in Europe, that they were not interested in fighting a, a massive war in uh, in Afghanistan mm -hmm. and in British India, and they essentially just created a line of control. What was that line? Where uh, it's called the Durand Line. Yeah, it's right. the line between uh, that separated British India at the time, and which is that portion is now Pakistan. But ah. at the time, it was British India and uh, and Afghanistan, at, in 1919 when that war concluded. But what it created was an independent Afghan state, for the mm -hmm. first time in history, with exact borders. Uh, there are, are these still the borders? And these are the borders and that we're looking at right, right? Now. And it's landlocked, right? And it's a landlocked country. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Afghanistan turned into a monarchy for about, I'd say about a good 50, 55 years from 1919 up until the mid-1970s when oh, right. a, a communist government mm -hmm. was actually formed in Afghanistan. In Kabul. In Kabul, right? Uh, was it elected? I it think it was, was not elected. No, it was not elected. How, it was how? a bloody coup uh, that supplanted another coup that had just happened that overthrew the monarchy. Uh, the Communist Party started. It was a Communist Party. It was a Communist Party. Was it indigenous or was it from the Soviet Union? It was an indigenous party. It was. It hmm. was an indigenous party. Uh, the party then basically had a great deal of resistance because they were reducing the role of the clergy. In that country. For one thing, they were also increasing the role of women. Uh, they were increasing the role of women. Mm -hmm. And in the 1970s, Afghanistan, uh, unlike what we see now in the news, started becoming, started becoming a very modern right. state in terms of social affairs. Okay, so what, when was this? In the 70s? Yeah, yeah. So this was 1978. Was there a monarchy still? Or what, what? No, the no. monarchy was uh, abolished by a, a bloodless coup, which then in turn was overthrown by the Communist the Party. So of was it a parliamentary system or what? Was there a parliament at it, that what, point? There was a parliament that uh -huh. was created, uh, a Politburo, more similar right. to what you'd see in Eastern Europe, Europe at the time. The United so States. So this was early 70s? This was 1978. 78, okay. Yeah, towards mm -hmm. the end of the 70s. 
the United States was not happy that there was a communist party that had, was Why? in another country because it was communist. And, and th right. therefore, assuming that the, the Soviet Union would have a great deal of pull in that area uh, or increasing their pull and getting closer to the Arabian Sea. Which okay, was wait a concern. minute now. So this was during the period of the Cold War in that the is United correct. States. Okay? The United States and Soviet Union were... Loggerheads. They were loggerheads at that time in the late 1970s. Right. Uh, the leader of the Soviet Union at the time was Leonid Brezhnev. Mm -hmm. At the time in the United States, uh, President Carter was... Right. Oh, was yeah, yeah, top. yeah. Right. So uh, we were unhappy. We as the United States were unhappy that the Soviet Union was possibly in a position to exert a great deal of control in another country in Asia and they were getting closer to the Indian Ocean if they were able to control Afghanistan. It's a step closer. So, and so, but this is in the middle of the Cold War where the United States foreign policy, I think a lot, was an enemy of my enemy as my friend. Also, essentially, that's right? what okay, that's so how it worked. So why don't you describe how that worked then? Right, so what happened at the time to offset the, the Soviet intervention in Afghanistan. Was it an intervention? Yes. It was, did the Soviet Union invade? They invaded, let me just okay. move a step back. Okay. The, 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 the new government that had formed in Kabul had just uh, started to exert control over the entire area of Afghanistan. And what the United States did subsequently was uh, they sent in guerrilla fighters through its ally in Pakistan Ah. to actually fight the communist government of Afghanistan. Wait a minute. Oh, okay, so, but this was through our allies, or the U.S. allies, called Pakistan. Correct, correct. Okay. So, uh, Mujahideen, which were, ref right. which were uh, you'd translate that into holy warriors in the, in the Jihad. local. Jihad. Yeah, Pashtun language. Uh, they were sent in to fight the communist government. From Pakistan. From Pakistan. Uh, they were supported by the ISI, which is the Military and Intelligence Services of Pakistan, and the CIA. Yeah, Central Intelligence work, Agency of the United States. Working together. Right. Yeah, right. So when this was happening, the regime, the communist regime in Afghanistan became weakened by the constant onslaught of attacks. And by the end of 1978, the Soviet Union decided to invade. To and, support the communist government, correct? correct? Yeah. Okay. The, the but were they invited in? They would argue that they were, correct? They, were, they would argue that they were invited in okay. by the Communist Party of Afghanistan. Yes, okay. So prior to that, the Soviet Union were, were sending military advisors into Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Not that different from what we were doing towards the beginning of the Vietnam yes, War or prior sure. to it. Right, sure. Uh, the military advisors then turned into the full-on Red Army. That and that was in 79? That was by 79. They invaded the country uh, to fight off these insurgents. Uh, the insurgency continued for another nine years. The Soviet right. Union stayed there for nine years, and it became what was known as the Soviet Vietnam. Right. Uh, we, through the United States, we funded the Mujahideen to fight the, the Red Army. We armed them. And these were who? I mean, these were people from? These were people from Pakistan? anywhere from Pakistan, local Afghans, and a lot of people from Saudi Arabia. Huh. A prominent one that we probably know is Osama, Osama bin, Laden. bin Laden. Yeah. Was he actually in Afghanistan? He was actually in Afghanistan, in the hills. Uh -huh. the, Saudi Arabia also contributed a s significant amount of money towards the, uh, the overthrow of the communist government in What's their interest in the region? Just to control it, right? Just to control it. Just to control it and mm -hmm. to have a stake mm -hmm. in, the, in the area. A and to reduce the uh, the role of the Soviet Union at that time. So this was an actual then revolt against the communist government of Kabul, right. which had been assist which was assisted by the Soviet Union. That's correct. And the United States was it in the United the interest of the United States to then overthrow or battle with the Soviet Union? Yeah, it became that, a, it, Afghanistan became a proxy war. Okay, between the United between States. The United States and the Soviet Union. Right. The other thing it did in the long term for Afghanistan is it created a, a militaristic society, uh -huh. and it became a hotbed for terrorism, which has not gone away. Okay, what, what terrorists were there? The, by terrorists, we're talking about guerrilla fighters who were trained by the CIA, and they were trained by the ISI of Pakistan, to fight in the hills 
and they against the government of against the government of Afghanistan, Afghanistan. which was a communist government. Right. Uh, these people were largely motivated by religion and were ex were uh, practicing a more extreme form of Islam, uh, which was able to basically inspire people to fight against this atheist outside force. Was this the Taliban? Which was, which was this. The Soviet Union. No, I know. The outside force was the Soviet Union. By the way, the Soviets, well, anyway, let, let me ask you another question. So um, these were what the United States would now call terrorists that we were aiding? At the time, correct. Okay, against the, the Soviet But at the time, we didn't call them that. No, we called them freedom fighters. Freedom fighters, okay. That's what they were referred right. to. And right. President Reagan referred to them when he invited uh, some of the people into the White House at the time. Was it Reagan or Carter? It was Reagan by that point. Okay, after and he continued Carter's policy. He continued Carter's policy and invested a substantial amount of money into the training of the Mujahideen and assisting Pakistan uh, as a base of operations uh -huh. for sending the Mujahideen from Pakistan into Afghanistan to fight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what? And this policy went on for about eight, nine years. 79 to 81, about? 79 no, to 89. 89, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it destroyed the Soviet Red Army. Uh, right, because they went there, correct? Yes. Like, we, like the United States went to Vietnam. Right, but remember, we, went, we were about 10,000 miles away from Vietnam. Vietnam. The Soviet Union had a border with right. Afghanistan. Right. Or has a border. Right, and? And they had a, a very difficult engagement in that country mm -hmm. and the bombing and they mined the country substantially, the Soviet Union. The Soviets yeah. did. Mm -hmm. And again, what it did was it the entire country of Afghanistan at that point became very accustomed to just constant fighting, mm -hmm. constant war, and it became a way of life for people. Mm -hmm. Not just the- Civilians too? Yeah, not just, I was just gonna say, not just the, uh, the actual Mujahideen warriors, mm -hmm. the guerrilla fighters, but civilians also. Mm -hmm. Became accustomed to bombs going off, mm -hmm. aerial bombardment, mines going off, shooting bullet holes in buildings. That was a, that became a fact of life, which wasn't always the case. That did not exist before the 1970s. Mm -hmm. uh, so that at, by 1992, uh, the Soviet Union had completely withdrawn from Afghanistan. And they were in the middle of a collapse themselves. Right. They collapsed the they, Soviet Union in 91. they collapsed also. Right. And there was a communist government that was running Afghanistan towards the end, but it collapsed. Uh -huh. What that resulted in was infighting on the part of these Mujahideen factions. Yes. Trying to control the country. So yep. it became a country very similar to Somalia in that yeah. warlords were running the country. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was by 1994, a organization that came from Pakistan referred to as the Taliban the, the military they were from Pakistan too correct the mil you know, the word Taliban means military students mm -hmm. and these this group was created by the ISI the intelligence service of Pakistan that was concerned about the instability that was taking place in Afghanistan at that point because of these warring uh, warlord right, factions right uh, and there wasn't any clear government. And this Taliban organization came in very well financed by Pakistan at that point. The United States had lost interest in the area. Really? Because the Soviet Union was out. Right. And we had prevailed in the Cold right. War, mm -hmm. and it was considered a major victory. Mm -hmm. And the loss that the Soviets experienced in Afghanistan was a large reason for their own collapse. demise uh, right, and collapse exactly. also because of the amount of money that they right. spent. There. And because of the ruination of their own troops too. Absolutely. Who came back to Moscow addicted cuz remember Afghanistan is a huge uh, they, they grow poppies and yeah. heroin and it's the largest opium yeah. market in the world. In the world, which is yeah. do you suppose that's one of the reason that all these big powers are interested also is because of the heroin or what? Uh, the Biggest issue right now, there's been a uh, discovery of rare earth metals right, that right. exist in, in, in Afghanistan. And it, it's, it's spe they speculate that a trillion dollars worth of these minerals are in the ground. Right. But there's uh, also poppies. And, there, and there's a substantial amount of opium growth right. there also, right. which is the main resource that the Taliban right. uses 
for sale. And for currency, right? And for currency, yeah. Okay, so then what happens? This mess is created, correct? So, right. So at that point, by 1994, uh, the Taliban begins to exert control and take over uh, Afghanistan little by little, right. heavily financed by Pakistan, so that by 1997, there was a new organization that started up in Afghanistan, a resistance organization, referred to as the Northern Alliance. Right, right. Uh, people watching may remember the Northern Alliance I do. because they assisted the United States in overthrowing the Taliban in 2001 after the United States went in following 9-11. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just wondering when the United States got reinterested. Yeah, right. It was after the 9-11 attacks. Okay, uh, so but in the 90s, the United States was largely absent? Completely absent, mm -hmm. completely absent. They reduced aid to Pakistan, which was a major ally that helped facilitate mm -hmm. the destruction and demise of the Soviet Union, and they lost interest in the area completely. So we also left a lot of our weaponry there, uh, then, too? At the time. Mm -hmm. So the Stinger missiles, which were played a pro prominent role in taking down Russian aircraft, uh, these were essentially bazookas that people were able to hold on their shoulders yeah. and take down bombers and other fighting aircraft uh, on the part of the Soviet Union were basically left uh, on the ground mm -hmm. in, in that country. Uh, however, by 1997, I'm going to just throw out another familiar name, uh, Pervez Musharraf was the uh, in India. Well, no, he Pakistan. was he was a Pakistan right. pa Pakistani uh, general of the army right. at the time. He wanted to eliminate the Northern Alliance completely, and he sent thousands of Pakistani troops to assist the Taliban in demolishing any um, any adversary that they had on the ground. Uh -huh. And it was a successful ploy. Mm. The interesting thing was, uh, four years later, Musharraf had to switch sides and become an ally of the United right. States to take the that. Taliban out right. after we gave him an ultimatum of joining and becoming uh, a an ally or essentially becoming an adversary at that mm. point. Mm -hmm. uh, so at that point, the Taliban had exerted you know, overwhelming control and domination of Afghanistan. Uh, and you'll we'll see the things that they did. You know, basically, women ceased women. to have any rights right. in that country. Uh, mass ex executions. Uh, Islamic law was essentially Sharia. Sharia Islamic law was mm -hmm. essentially implemented as the law of the land, and they enforced it very, uh, very strictly there. So that's the Afghanistan that you know we came to know by the late 1990s. Mm -hmm. What happened uh, subsequently uh, to the United States in order to get us interested in that area again were the September 11th attacks. Right, in 2000. In 2001 on, on September 11th. Right. The attacks on the Pentagon, mm -hmm. the World Trade Center, and the plane that went down in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Right. Uh, leading to the loss of life of uh, several thousand Americans. Right. And what was uh, at that time assumed and intelligence found was that a, Osama bin Laden, a former Mujahideen warrior in Afghanistan, in Afghanistan right. trained by the CIA, was the head of an organization called Al Qaeda. Right. And Al Qaeda had training camps in Afghanistan. Uh, was he there? And it was alleged that he was also physically there. Was he? At the time. We don't know. Because ultimately he was found in a military garrison town in Pakistan. Right. Where he was killed in 2011. Right. Called Abbottabad. But it was assumed that he was actually physically in Afghanistan. And he may have just been en route in Afghanistan on the way to Pakistan. But at the time, uh, the Bush administration that was in power needed to show the American people that we, we were going to do something. We're we were going to do something quick. Yeah. And the uh, thinking at the time was we needed to attack Afghanistan. The leadership in Afghanistan, the Taliban, at the time were basically not committed to trying to over to give uh, bin Laden to the United States right. military. Right. Uh, they weren't willing to turn him over and they were vague and they were ambiguous about you know what had happened and they started talking about the overwhelming policy of the United States and that the United States in that part of the world was playing mischief and at that time the US government basically had just had it and said mm -hmm. you know we're gonna we're going to get this guy, bin Laden, if he's there, and we're going to overthrow the 
regime that's in power, which was the Taliban at that point. Correct, right. So and then, we engaged in a nation building. Uh, uh, well, we first got, wanted to get rid of Osama bin Laden. Was that right. the first goal? That was the first goal, yeah. but part of the goal was also to eliminate any al-Qaeda training camps mm -hmm. and terrorist training camps that were in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, and, and the camps were often funded through the growth of opium, as you mentioned before, right. which was the currency in that area. Uh, so therefore, we essentially created an alliance with the Northern Alliance, which right. was this organization right. Right. that I referred to before, uh, which was an anti-Taliban organization. We didn't really look into what they were all about. No, again, an enemy, enemy of... But the enemy right. is my friend. Right. And uh, when the United States went in with the Northern Alliance, they quickly were able to send the Taliban into the hills and what we thought was a victory for, for the United States. For the but military. we didn't withdraw. Pardon me? We didn't declare victory and come home. No, we didn't. We uh, stayed there we to, stayed as there. you said, to nation build. We were the going to reform built, Afghanistan. And we were going to try to find Osama bin Laden. Right, which eventually we did. The United yeah, States so, did, yeah, but he was not found in right. Afghanistan. So why did we stay? Why did we stay? We were nation building at that point. And right. what, the, what was sold to the U.S. public was that we're, uh, we're going to prevent this country from becoming a future terrorist training ground. And we're going to help women. And we're going to help women, and we're going to help people go back to school, and we're going to help minorities that were there. Yep. Uh, all these you know, great projects. Uh, but what happened was uh, there was a confidential memo that uh, at the time, the Secretary of Defense in 2002, Donald Rumsfeld, under the Bush mm -hmm. administration, it, that's just been recently released, that, this memo, indicating that uh, Rumsfeld thought the only way to, do, to succeed, to prevail, was to pay people off in mm -hmm. Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. The warlords who came back in after the Taliban was ousted by the U.S. Army and the Northern Alliance, the warlords were still an issue for the U.S. Army. They mm -hmm. were conducting attacks on the Northern Alliance as well as on American soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, so the policy at the time was to pay these warlords to prevent them from attacking. Mm -hmm. and, and it succeeded. Many of these warlords basically became the highest officials in the Afghan government mm -hmm. later, became members of parliament, became military generals and politicians. And presidents. And presidents. And presidents. Mm -hmm. But the policy to pay Afghanistan uh, warlords continued in the United States. And that continued for years and years. So the corruption that we talk about that existed in Afghanistan was aided by the lack of oversight that we had. Yes, correct. In that mm -hmm. country. I think and, that's always the case, isn't it? Yeah. And you had a country that basically had a GDP of about four <clears throat> billion a year, and we were we invested over a trillion dollars into that country. In weapons. In weapons, but also in reconstruction. Right. And it was a country that simply couldn't absorb that kind of money. It wasn't used to absorbing large sums of money like that. Right. And the money was lost, and it was, uh, it, you know, it, there were bribes that were paid. And they say up to about 40% of the money that was uh, invested in Afghanistan were, was invested in organizations and companies that came from the United States. Yeah, right. Halliburton? Halliburton. There were companies in New Jersey. There were companies mm -hmm. in other states mm -hmm. that uh, were involved in reconstructing roads, schools, clinics. So much of that money came back mm -hmm. to the United States. Right. And in many cases, the, some of these companies were even indicted for bribing Afghan officials and convicted. And yet the money, the flow of money continued. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about the corruption that existed in Afghanistan, that's absolutely true but it was aided and abetted by the corruption and the defense contractors who, that were American at the time. And we stayed there till when? Till recently, right? They, we stayed there up until a couple of weeks ago. So President Trump in 2020 thought that the war, it, 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 was, it, it's not, it wasn't an original thought. He knew that, the, that this was a unsustainable uh, expense, expenditure for the United States in blood and money and decided to negotiate a exit from Afghanistan. Okay, so with let's the let's let's go back a minute. What was Obama's position? Obama's position was uh, was more complicated. Right, right. His his, his he was placed in a position where the, when 
Osama bin Laden was actually found, and he was found to be in Pakistan, right. uh, what his the natural next step would have been would have been to uh, declare the victory. Pakistani victory and leave. Right. That, and and he could have certainly done that, but we were in the midst of this nation building project, and what we were using Pakistan for at the time was a means to essentially transport military equipment to mm -hmm. Afghanistan as well as civilian goods for the reconstruction of Afghanistan. And if what we, if what Obama would have had to have done was to declare Pakistan a state sponsor of terror. Which and, he didn't want to do. Which he didn't want to do because it would have made the rebuilding of Afghanistan more expensive. Right. Because we would need a new place to transit all these, uh, right. all this military hardware as well as civilian goods. And the, Obama did not want to do that. Mm -hmm. So we continued to stay there in Afghanistan. And we continued to maintain the relationship with Pakistan at the time, despite how du duplicitous it mm -hmm. seemed, uh, where so they then, were helping the Taliban and they were helping the United States at the same time. All right, so then Trump is elected, right? Trump is elected. Trump, uh, it was Un largely, unknown to many people, Trump did not want to continue wars that were, in his mind, useless, right? Correct, correct. The, uh, what, there was an article that a lot of people would have been uh, surprised uh, about was he actually consulted with President Jimmy Carter. Yeah. In mm -hmm. a conversation that was reported by the Christian Science Monitor, he contacted uh, Carter in his home in Georgia and talked about all these wars that the United States was involved in and how big a waste of money they were that was his main concern, right? That was his main concern, and yeah. that we weren't getting anywhere and getting anything for them. Well, he was right about that. Right. And he, you know, and he actually had a, a famous conversation with, actually, it's not famous, it was, uh, but it was released that, that he had this conversation with uh, Jimmy Carter on how do we get out of all these things. And? And that was the Trump policy, was to slowly disengage from these uh, decades-long conflicts that we had. In many cases, weren't even sure, the people fighting weren't even sure why and when you know these things were even happening in many cases they predated their births mm -hmm. you know for our u.s soldiers that were on the ground uh, as was the case in 9-11 mm -hmm. uh, you know a lot of the soldiers that left afghanistan recently they were they weren't even born mm -hmm. when the september 11th attacks happened and so the trump policy was to disengage and one of the places he wanted to disengage from was afghanistan so what it's, happened so we so he negotiated a treaty with the taliban uh, in, uh, I think, the start of 2016 to 2017. I'm not well, sure he was the elected exact... in 2016. In 16. 16, right. Right. So shortly afterwards, he began negotiations with the Taliban to withdraw from the country. And then? The US. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then 2020, he did not prevail in the election. Right. So that policy then was continued by the Biden administration. Uh, they did not turn around and decide to stay. They continued the Trump policy to withdraw. Uh, they waited the, too late. They waited, right. The, too late. The, the withdrawal, as most people have seen on television, was not done in an organized fa fashion. W some can argue that they, they, these things never do. They're, they're never pretty. Yeah. Like, uh, like Vietnam. Like Vietnam. Like, you know, a million people dying when the British withdrew India. Th tens of thousands dying when they withdrew from Kenya. Uh, the, when the British withdrew from Hong Kong, that was an oh. exception where there was a ceremony. They, uh -huh. they're usually yeah, not they ceremony. had a lease with Hong Kong. They had a lease. Right. right. And they, they right. just got to the end of their lease and right. they had so to So it was leave. a nice looking ceremony with yeah, fireworks. Right, right, that's right. often not the case right. when these uh, withdrawals no, take see, place. That, that's what bothers me. Okay, so what you're saying is something that I think is just coming out. So Trump made a decision to withdraw by a certain date, correct? Yeah. By May, I think by May. By, by the end of May. By, yeah, the by end Memorial of May. Day. Okay. But yeah. he was defeated. That's correct. Okay, and in comes Biden. In comes Biden. And so did Biden follow that? No. What Biden did was he extended the he extended, deadline. He extended the deadline, but till, till I believe it September was September 11th, I, I think. I think it was the end of August, actually. It was August 31st. Okay, so it wasn't September. 11th. No, it wasn't okay. September 11th. All right, so it's the end of report. August. Right. The the problem though was he did not, you know, and the Biden administration did not push Americans who were still on the ground to leave the country earlier. Right. So that was the mistake. Uh, you know, I mean, could, could the 12 Marines who wound up dying in a, in a suicide attack been saved? I don't know. 
I don't know. If someone okay. is, is okay. hell-bent on doing that, you know, uh, conducting a suicide attack and being in a crowded place, well, that's going to happen. However, where the Biden administration really failed was they waited until the last minute to start moving massive numbers of people. Now, who are we talking about? We're talking about contractors, American contractors. Right. We're talking about Afghan nationals who happen to be U.S. citizens, With, maybe right. visiting family. Or green you know, card holders. Or green card holders. We're also talking about tourists that were there mm -hmm. in students. Afghanistan, students that were there. And we're talking about, you know, the U.S. military itself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, one can argue that there should have been a greater amount of pressure put on the people that were on the ground who were, quote unquote, visiting Afghanistan to leave early, uh, regardless of what the withdrawal date was, because the policy was established that we were leaving. Right. And that the U.S. military was not going to be in a position to protect these people. And then they were going to have to deal with the, you know, the, the, the good hardness of the Taliban, mm -hmm. hopefully, to let them leave when they wanted to leave. And the Biden administration was not forceful in imposing this withdra withdrawal with respect to the actual Americans that were on the ground in that country. Or our in friends different capacities. there. Or the friends that yeah, were there. Yeah, right. There's another conversation that people have had about the fact that while the Biden administration is a little bit more open to immigration than the Trump a administration. Bit. Wow was, right. depending on the country, right. uh, there wasn't enough of an effort to assist uh, contractors that were Afghani that assisted the U.S. military to get visas to get out of the country. Because okay. these were going to be people that were going to be in, in a position of being victimized by the Taliban for their, uh, for their assistance. Given to the I, US okay, military. so what if this is the case? What if the military, or at least parts of the military, don't want to get out of there? So they uh, gave Biden essentially bad intelligence. Look, I mean, we, you know, part of us, part of the, our country talked about nation building. Right. But what we are leaving Afghanistan with is 500 U.S. bases right. in different parts of Afghanistan. So With it, all the equipment. With much of the equipment. So because of much of the equipment was given to the Afghan army, right. which, you know, disintegrated within weeks. I know. See, that's what I think happened, actually. I don't think that Biden had a real choice. I think that the United States got defeated. That, that, sure. That, that the Taliban and uh, the Afghanis, the Taliban in particular, said, we don't care what your deadline is. You're getting out now. Right. And so Biden was stuck. Right. I mean, we, we call this, you know, this was referred to as a peace plan yeah. between Trump, between Biden it and wasn't. the Taliban. At the end of the day, it's a defeat. It I was mean, a if, defeat. if your objective is to get rid of the Taliban and uh, to end, you know, any kind of uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, exportation of opium, right. which was a, a very big, another part of the project, aside from the nation building that was taking place there on the part of the United States, uh, these, these goals were not met. Exactly. These goals were not met. And the Taliban, who we were, you know, essentially blaming as a proxy for the September 11th attacks. They're we still were, in place. They're, in, they're back in. They're back we're, in. We're, we're shaking hands with them. Are we? We were, you know, at, at the, during the quote unquote peace negotiations. I wonder. So it is a defeat. Right. It is a that's, defeat. That's, but that's not the way the mainstream media is playing it. They're acting as if in criticism of Biden, which I just don't think Biden had any choice. But they seem to be criticizing Biden for the ineptness of the withdrawal. I'm not certain there, he had any choice. There have been large factions of people, even on the left yeah. and on the right, yeah. but even on the left, that believe that we should never have left the country. I know. And defense contractors would probably agree with that point of view based on how well they've done over the last 20 years. Or maybe years. that we should have left it sooner. Sure, that's another point of view. That of maybe view. perhaps after Osama bin Laden was found in another country, uh, maybe we should have basically, you know, uh, packed up and left. But I, I think. But others, others thought that we should continue to stay there. I know the military in particular. That's why the I. Military has said, you right. know, we've stayed in Germany, we've stayed right. in Korea right. for right. decades. Why not Afghanistan? And I think that they pressured Biden to get a deadline that was extended past Trump. And the, and the Taliban said, we don't care what you do, President Biden, we're going to take Kabul. That's correct. That's correct. I, that's what I think happened. I don't think, I support Biden's decision to get out, but I don't think it was his decision. I think it was forced upon him 
by the Taliban. By the Taliban, absolutely, right. and absolutely. And we did, we no longer had the interest nor the heart to continue fighting them. How could we? We got defeated. Well, look, the other part of it was uh, the Mike Mullen, who was the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs between 2007 and 2011, and was be between the Bush administration and the Obama administration, talked about the fact that this was an impossible war to win. Exactly. You had uh, a, a population, the Taliban, that could mix in with civilians easily without, without any difficulty. There were a lot of American arms that were still physically on the right, ground. Right, right. And they had sanctuary in a neighbor, Pakistan. Right. And we abandoned Bagram. That's correct. Well, anyway, I think we're pretty much out of time, Kurt. I want to thank you, though, for shedding some light on this horrible situation. Because regardless of the truth or not, the um, United States might be an empire that becomes fractured on the same place as all these other empires. Absolutely. And I, I think that the American people better rethink its whole role in the world, I guess. Right. And if you're not certain right now, wait till, what ha wait till you see what happens when we leave Iraq in a few I know. months. All right. In a few months, you think? The, the quoted uh, date is December 31st. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Thank you very much. So we'll be back in a month or so to continue our discussions about what's happening. Thank you. Thanks.